called Soul Rest. And this message is um, really um, a, a message that is all about us just coming into God's presence and being refreshed. How many of you are up for that? Yeah. Pete, if you could help me, just put up the very first slide of the sermon, then I'll, I think I'll be able to drive after that. Um, soul rest. And I, I love the image that you're going to see on the screen there. It is just, uh, it's, it's like so placid, so peaceful, and so uh, refreshing. You know, in our world, um, there's such chaos and busyness, and it's just, uh, we live hectic lives, and we rush everywhere we go. Um, but the theme today is what God is tied together in just that sense of coming to the altar, the sense of resting in who He is, Him chasing after us with His love. This soul rest. There's rest that He has for us in His love that no one else can ever offer. Now, the soul, what we're going to be talking about is mainly... It's the intersection of three different things. It's your mind, it's your emotions, and it's your will. All three of those things coming together. Your mind, emotions, and will. Where they intersect, there you have your soul. Where is it? If I were to ask you to touch it on your body, some would do this, some would go. I mean, I, we don't know. It's this spiritual dimension, but each of us has a soul. And I believe at the end of the sermon that some of you are going to get saved. I believe your soul is going to be saved today. I th I'm praying for that. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand at the end if you're accepting Christ as your Savior. I promise to guard that moment for you. I'm not going to single you out in any way. But I really believe that's going to happen for some of you. So I want to read from Psalm 62. And... Um, Guys, you're going to have to help me. My clicker must have died completely. I think the same demon that got in the microphone of uh, uh, Pastor Mo got in my clicker. So Psalm 62, I'm going to read it. Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from Him. Truly He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. How long will you assault me? Would all of you throw me down? This leaning wall, this tottering fence. Surely they intend to topple me. From my lofty place, they take delight in lies. With their mouths they bless, but in their hearts they curse. Yes, my soul, find rest in God alone. My hope comes from Him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor, my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. Surely the lowborn are but a breath, the highborn are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion or put vain hope in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken. Two things I have heard. Power belongs to you, God. And with you, Lord, is unfailing love. Amen. And you reward everyone according to what they have done. Have you ever been kayaking? Anyone in the room? Let me see your hands. Anybody? Yeah, okay. Some brave hearts back in here. Uh, over here too. Kayakers. I mean, I've never done it. I'm not that brave. I, you know, I've got bad knees. I'm scared to death of getting in there and cramping up. I honestly... But it looks so fun. Um, many times Stephanie and I have driven along the edge of the river in Colorado and watched rafters and kayakers down off the cliffs as they're going down the Cascades. And it's remarkable to me this one amazing feat that I never really understood until I had it explained to me. But I mean the current is moving so rapidly downhill. But then there's this place where they can just 
sort of, I don't know, just hang out for a while. You look down there, look at that, that one kayak, he's just sort of dangling there in the middle, just hanging out. What's happening is, there's a place, usually it's behind a big rock. They call it an eddy. We have some eddies in our church. But an eddy is a place... I mean, literally, we have some people named Eddie. I wasn't. I guess I'm being funny and not even trying to. But, but there's this place behind the rock where the currents swirl and the stream literally goes against the grain. So that you've got the current coming downhill, but there's this sort of draft that's pushing back upward. And if you get in the eddy, you can just hang out and rest as long as you want. You can just relax and enjoy it. That's what I'm praying that... That happens for each one of us as we're in the midst of a current that's pushing so hard that we can hide behind the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and then we can experience, you know, a spiritual eddy, a place to just rest and relax. David said, my soul finds rest in God alone. It's a peculiar wording and actually it happens five different times in this little psalm. My soul finds rest in you alone. I want you to know this. Peace is a person. Listen to the careful wording of Matthew chapter 11 28 to 30. Jesus speaking says come unto me Come unto me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My soul finds rest in God alone, not in money. And I speak as one who's trying to make good, sound financial decisions. And I think all of us, we have goals financially. Not in accomplishments. And I speak of one that thinks it's a good idea to have dreams and to pursue them. Not in relationships. And I speak as one who has an incredible marriage. I'm so thankful for Stephanie. I'm blessed with two amazing sons, one incredible daughter-in-law. I've, I've got family, brothers, sisters-in-law, nieces, nephews. I've got beyond that friends that are so dear. All of these circles. But we won't find the answer in relationships except one relationship. And that is in the Lord Jesus Christ, in God alone. Now... Psalm 62, we believe, the best guess is that it was written when David was going through probably one of the most severe tests of his life. His own son Absalom, get this, Ab Shalom, it means my father is peace. I think it's a reference that David named him that because he thought my heavenly father, my God is peace. But Absalom definitely did not live up to his name. He did not bring any sense of peace to his father. He was so hurtful to his father. He rebelled against his dad. He tried to take over the kingdom. And uh, he, he led a coup d'etat against his own father, the king. And it, it happened over several years and it came to a head. And finally, King David is on the run for his life. Uh, just stripped down to bare threads and ashes on his head literally as people are hurling rocks at him, leaving the city of Jerusalem, leaving his kingdom behind, not knowing if he's going to come back. And in that setting, David says, my soul finds rest in God alone. And God restored him. You know the story. I don't have to tell you that. David was restored to the throne but David sounds a lot like the best man who ever walked on earth who now lives in heaven. Jesus Christ, one day they were yelling, Hosanna! 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then some of the same people in the same crowd the next day were yelling, Crucify him! But his hope was in the fulfillment of God's assignment to him. God's own son giving his life as a sacrifice for our sins. So I want you to notice the change from verse 1 to verse 5. If you have Psalm 62 in front of you, you can see, Truly my soul finds rest in God. But then at verse 5, yes, my soul finds rest in God. My hope comes from Him. He's, he's moving from a belief to a carrying out of it. And in fact, when you get to verse 5 and move to the rest of the psalm, he starts talking to his soul. O oh soul, bless the Lord. There's this change from this idea, I believe that God is my source, to the enacting of it. Yes, soul, okay, come on, soul. Get on board with what you know to be true. Worship the Lord, trust in Him, believe in your God. That's what David is, is showing us. You know, sometimes, sometimes we need that, don't we? It sounds a lot like what David wrote in Psalm 103, another one of his psalms. He, he says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of His benefits. And then he names five different benefits that we have by serving the Lord. He ends by saying, my youth is renewed just like the eagles. We have great benefits by serving God. But God expects us to talk to our soul from time to time and say, Come on, soul. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, but I see this going on in the world. Pastor Mo hit it on, on this in the worship. I, you know, there's this pandemic going on. No, no, no. Soul. Bless the Lord. Our hope is in the Lord. Our hope is not in the economy. Our hope is not in the cure. Our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, it's just like Mark chapter 9. The story of a, a man who... His son was battling seizures. And the father felt hopeless. I know exactly what that feels like. Um, I remember Stephanie and me together when our son, less than a year old, had a, a hard seizure. And I remember them saying there's only room for one person to get in the ambulance. <clears throat> How empty my heart was when Stephanie climbed in the ambulance with Zach. And I stood and watched them drive away and I jumped in the car to race to the hospital. I remember that feeling. I know what it's like to be that dad. And Jesus says to the, to the man, Do you believe? And the dad says, Lord, I do believe, but help my unbelief. Aren't you glad that we can be honest and transparent and, you know, vulnerable with God? Lord, I do believe. But at the same time, there's this struggle going on inside of me. <laughs> what is this? God, help my unbelief. And Jesus didn't say, Pal, come on, man, be a better Christian. Where's your faith? Don't you know you're supposed to go around saying, I'm too stressed to be, I'm too blessed to be stressed? <laughs> I didn't get it right. <laughs> Don't you know you're only supposed to be up here? You're only supposed to be driving a Cadillac, nothing worse. Don't you know you're supposed to have the finest home in town because that's what it means to be a Christian? But when you are facing a dire situation, when you have trusted God with everything inside of you, and you do believe but you still don't see the evidence yet. Oh God, help my unbelief. 
And that's when Jesus said to him, all things are possible. All things are possible to him who believes. So there's two points this morning. Number one is God is strong. God is strong. That's how this psalm ended. Power belongs to God. God is so strong. You know, this last week, um, we had a phone conversation with Zach um, from prison. And, um, and he, was, he was just telling the things that God's doing in his life and whose lives are being touched and the incredible insights that God's giving him. And, and I just said, son, I'm proud of you because you're in a hard place. And you're just serving God. That's all. You're just walking with the Lord. You keep living the faith. And you know what he said? Right. This, this was so profound to me. He said, it's easy for me because I'm connected to the strong ox. I'm yoked to the strong ox. I'm yoked to Jesus. He does the heavy lifting. And I just do my part. What if all of us could understand this? Lord, you do the heavy lifting for me and I'm going to link to you and follow you with all of my heart. There's um, times where we should be silent before God. In fact, do you know they say that this psalm is best read silently? Silent prayer that maybe. The original intent was for it to be not even voiced out loud, but just prayed internally, quietly. Um, so there's this sense that, that, that David is saying from the depths of his heart, he alone is my salvation. We don't know for sure if he's in a camp and he's, he's on the other side of the river. Uh, where they've separated from him, him from his army and not sure which direction the enemy is going to come from, his own son leading this coup d'etat. Maybe in the tent that night by the light of a lamp, the oil flickering the lamp, and, and maybe that's when he took the pen and wrote out this song. But in his silence, there is strength. I remember hearing the story it was, goodness, 525 years ago, I suppose. Well, no, no, no. Let me see. It's probably more like 500 years ago. Yeah. When Martin Luther, a great leader of the Reformation of the church, was brought before all of the leaders. It was called the Diet of Worms. He was put before the council of the Catholic Church and, and they told him, you need to renounce this idea of salvation by faith. You must renounce this notion that Scripture has uh, the only authority. But men have authority too. In Luther's words, he says, the emperor says, Martin Luther, will you or will you not recant your beliefs? Luther, here I stand I can do no other, so help me God. The crowd gasps. His courage is so evident. He, he penned it in a hymn that he wrote called, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. See, Martin Luther found a place behind the rock where he could rest his soul in the eddy of the river of God. Amen. And you can do the same, same thing. And then the second point this morning, God is loving. Not only is He strong, you know, we picture Him as a, a brute, but God is loving and kind. Verse 8 and 9 of our psalm, Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. Surely the lowborn are but a breath, the highborn but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing, they're only, they're only a breath. Do not trust in extortion or put hope in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things I've heard. 
Power belongs to the Lord. He is strong. And with you, Lord, is unfailing love. He is loving. Amen. God is strong. And God is loving. So sometimes when you've done all you can do and you have to just rely on God, you're probably in the best place that you could be. Amen. <laughs> Listen to these words from Exodus 14. It's verses 13 and 14. Moses said to the people, Do not fear. Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which will accomplish this for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see them again forever. The Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. Amen. Can you just picture the Egyptians at the Red Sea and they're backed up against the wall. They don't know what's going to happen. And they're, some of them are complaining and griping. Moses, oh yeah, so there weren't enough graves back in Egypt yet they had to bring us out here. This whole thing's a setup. You just brought us out here so they could slaughter us. Is that what's really going on? Can you imagine the, the mystery, the hysteria, the, just the jubilation as Moses stretches out the rod of God and the sea starts opening up and now they have walls of water and they walk through on dry ground. They didn't do anything. They didn't even take up swords. They, they didn't defend themselves. They, all they did, they were silent. And God said, watch this. And they walked through on dry ground. Proverbs 21 and verse 31 says, The horse is prepared for the day of battle, but victory belongs to the Lord. You know, you could insert modern weaponry in there. You could say Abrams tanks or uh, land-to-air missiles or various assault rifles or whatever. But that's not where our trust is. Our, our trust is in, in God. Victory belongs to the Lord. There's this idea of prepare, uh, preparing, preparation. The horse is prepared for battle. You do the best you can. But victory belongs to the Lord. And so I feel like God is saying to some of us here this morning, just be silent. Rely on me. You've exhausted all your strength. Don't worry, I've got this. Just rest in me. Even though you're in the middle of turbulent waters, you can really trust me that I'm going to carry you through to the other side. Here's what I want you to take away with you today. Here's the takeaway. Your God, your loving and strong God, will take care of you. Amen. Your loving and strong God will take care of you. In just a moment, the service is going to end with a, a video that's going to play. Um, it's an incredible song by the band Casting Crowns. Oh my soul, you are not alone. Just before we play that song, which really is going to serve as our altar call this morning, because we are going to get into the annual business meeting, and I'll have some instructions for you in a few moments, but... Before we do that, I simply want to ask, are you saved? Are you ready to meet God? You know, as we're talking about our soul, the place where our mind, emotions, and our will come together, that intersection of, of what we think, what we know, with our emotions, what we feel, and our will, our determination, what will we do, our volition. When those three things come together, what am I going to choose? The wise person chooses to follow God. So if you need to be one of the ones that gets saved today, I want to ask you to just pray these words along with me. Not out loud, but just silently 
in your heart. And, and just really mean it. And if you really mean it, if you really mean it, then you will start a relationship with the Creator of the universe today. This whole, this whole service is for you. I really felt as we were worshiping, some of you going, man, I feel that. That's awesome. Woo. Wow. Oh, I'm kind of getting a little nervous, a little fearful. I'm not sure about this. I better, I just want to, I'm not sure. I mean, God just says to you, listen, you're in a safe place. You don't have to worry. You can just trust Him. You can come to Him today with full assurance that He wants to rescue you just as much as you want to be rescued. So bow your heads with me. And when it gets to that part where I ask people to raise their hand, I'm asking all of you to keep your heads bowed, your eyes closed. Respect the dignity of that moment. I, I don't do it to single you out. I only do it so that, that I can make sure I see who you are and we, I, just so I can know, so that we can get you a good start. That's all. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, right now, I'm praying over the ones who are coming home to you in faith. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to save and rescue them. I know that you have several here in this room right now, and maybe some who are watching online right now, this is their moment. This is their destined, eternal moment. Let salvations take place. Save, rescue, heal, mend. So if you're one of the ones getting saved, you want to say something like this, and these aren't magic words, but dear God, um, I'm a sinner and I've messed up so bad. I can't do it on my own. Seems like every time I try, I prove that I'm a failure at this. So I give up. Not in a bad way, but in a good way. I really give up. I surrender. And I'm believing that when I surrender all of me to you, you're going to elevate me to the purpose you have for my life. Lord. I need to be saved. I need to be rescued. So today, I'm coming to you, Lord. I give you my heart. This is my act of faith. I'm putting my faith in you, Christ Jesus. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you rose from the dead. And I believe you are coming again. And I give you my life. I will serve you the remainder of my life. Please be patient with me. Please help me. Please give me good people around me to help me grow in my new walk with you. Please give me a good church family. I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Heads are still bowed. Eyes are closed. If you just prayed that prayer, would you just slip your hand up like this and make eye contact with me? I'm not going to single you out. I see you. God bless you. Who else? Yes, I see you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Praying for you guys. Or is there anyone else? Anybody else? Father, thank you for these four individuals. Just put your arms around them today and love on them and encourage them. And give them your strength. Don't let one of them fall away. Not on one of them. No. We're going to have a party someday in heaven. And we're going to look back at this day. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, let me just give a, a couple of instructions before we have the closing video, which is really our response time. This You could think of this like our altar call. I'm not asking you to come to the altar, but I'm asking you to build an altar in your heart. And this is, this is what I'd like to, to say. Um, after this video ends, we're going to go into our annual business meeting. Um, it's really hard to do a business meeting online. We are not live streaming the video, uh, the annual business meeting. However, if you are one of our voting members, that is, you have watched the videos, you requested membership, and you are on our voting roster, and if you are not here, you're welcome to participate in the meeting. Here's how. 
I'm, I'm doing a Zoom of the, uh, of the annual business meeting and you need to email me. That's the only way you can see it um, is, is to send an email. So the guys have put my email address on the screen right now. It's super easy. They're just going to leave it up there. KeithWayneHoward at gmail.com. If you email me right now and just say the word Zoom, uh, then I'll know what you mean. And in a few minutes, you'll get a link and you can connect with our video that way. Also, if you are, and that's for people that are our voting members, if you're a voter, um, you can text me. Um, if you can't, if you don't have my phone number, if you know someone who is in the meeting, you can text them and they will also be able to allow you to participate that way. So you've got about uh, five minutes and then we'll be starting the meeting. But um, the guys are going to play a video right now. And I ask you, as we're closing out our service, just let the words of this song touch you in a special way. It's a beautiful, beautiful worship song. This is us responding to our Lord together. And then when the song is over, here's what we need to do in this room, everybody. I need you to, all of you who are going to be part of the uh, annual business meeting, there's a packet out in the lobby. You need to go out there. You have to sign for it. And then uh, come back in. If you're one of the voters, I'm asking you to sit in the center section. Um, usually we just do the first four rows. But because of COVID,